The opposition continues to warn of grim consequences from the government's budget, including a decline in consumer spending. Meanwhile, Jamaica Labour Party leader Andrew Holness insists there would have been a different reaction if his administration had presented the latest revenue measures. David Brown attended a post-budget press briefing at the party's headquarters earlier today. It was an impassioned opposition leader, Andrew Holness, flanked by party stalwarts who hurled a raft of stinging criticisms against the Porsche Simpson Miller government for its fiscal measures. For Mr. Holness, it's time for the government to stop playing games with Jamaicans. I'm sick and tired of the politics of poverty. It's time to get rid of it. Sick of it. A fired-up Andrew Holness said the nation should be at a point of reflection, reflecting on the actions taken by those who lead the country. With Friday seeing the imposition of GCT on several basic food items, books and increases in motor vehicle licensing fees, he continued to rip through the government's $19.4 billion tax package. Mr. Holness said had the JLP presented the current budget, the response from varying sectors would have been quite different. If I had done that, there would be protests in the street. We can't have two standards. Declaring the administration's planned expenditure as a panic budget, the opposition said the government will not meet its revenue targets. The JLP predicts increased tax evasion and a slowdown in consumption as disposable incomes are further reduced. In what he dubbed the need for a politics of reality, Mr. Holness acknowledged the economy needs medicine, but the government runs the risk of making that medicine poisonous. The opposition accused the PNP government of reneging on several pre-election promises and says there's more talk than action. It's not a matter of lip service. It's not just saying, well, I love you, I love you, and hug and kisses. You must put your money where your love is. For the opposition, this year should be one of opportunities, not one in which the Jamaican populace is placed in a deeper economic rut. With a wage freeze now in place for public sector workers, the JLP is further accusing the government of playing the politics of fear. The opposition leader says the PNP was hypocritical in its stance on wage negotiations while in opposition, as the economy was fragile then as it is now. And now those very persons have to confront the fact that what they were promised cannot be delivered because the economic reality is the same whether or not it is the JLP or the PMP. For the opposition, now that the economic medicine has been applied, the symptoms are soon to be felt. David Brown, CVM News. Uh, the JLP says the government must get its house in order before thinking of deepening its participation in regional institutions like the Caribbean Court of Justice. So don't come to me with any distractions. Focus on the economy. That's the message opposition leader Andrew Holness is sending to the government in response to the administration's pronouncements of removing the British Queen as the country's head of state, as well as establishing the Trinidad-based Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, as the final court of appeal. Mr. Holness said taxpayers would be further burdened with a $1 billion price tag in carrying out the measures, the bulk of that resulting from Jamaica's contribution to the CCJ. For him, it's imperative the government gets its house in order before venturing further in regional endeavors let us talk about justice in our own country first before we go off to fix another regional thing where we're not quite certain what the benefit is to jamaicans Though acknowledging his party's support in principle for the CCJ, Mr. Holness feels the issue should be put to a referendum. The opposition leader said there are several questions surrounding the CCJ that are yet to be answered. Mr. Holness wants to know if places would be reserved for Jamaican judges and will the court sit in other territories to make it more accessible. The JLP leader insists he's merely looking out for the interests of Jamaicans. I'm not anti-regionalist. I'm pro-Jamaica. Jamaica first, people of Jamaica first, let us deal with fixing up our poverty here so that Jamaicans don't feel like they have to go all over the world to go find jobs and then people take disrespect with them. 
and on another regional issue with rising complaints of unfair trade practices by the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in relation to Jamaican exports, the opposition on Friday reiterated its call for the widening trade deficit between Jamaica and Trinidad to be addressed. Of Jamaica's regional trade deficit of US $1.2 billion, 2010 figures show Trinidad accounting for almost 60% of that amount. Carl Samuda says it's time for Jamaicans to stand up to Trinidad. So the same knife that sticks sheep can stick good. For him, the deficit is not representative of an unproductive Jamaican labor force, rather high energy costs. Trinidad has already signaled that it will be building a gas pipeline to serve the Eastern Caribbean. The opposition is unreserved in its notion that the time to put Jamaica first is now, with or without CARICOM partners. David Brown, CVM News.